My greetings. Welcome to the course Transitions and Link Words. Now I'm going to start today with an introduction and an overview. Okay. Many of you might be asking why is this course so important? Now let me start first by giving you a definition of what transitions are. Okay. So now transitions phrases and sentences that link ideas together. Basically, a simple transition is in writing and actually in communication, speaking. A transition is a word or a group of words or a sentence that leads your reader or the people you are talking to from one subject to another. So they enable you to progress smoothly. Now, I would like you to think of transitions as the links that hold together a chain. Without the links, nothing would hold the chair together. Now, just think of a chair which has a bit of broken pieces, and you would like to glue these pieces together to bring the chair to its former shape, to a better shape, to a shape which you can sit on, which you can use, okay, which you can utilize. So, actually, actually, the glue is the transitions and link words that grew the pieces of the broken chair together and the transitions are the tools that enable you to glue or to join to link okay the sentences the words the phrases together it's as simple as that now i'm going to give you 16 basic categories okay okay although there are other categories of transition words and link words conjunctions and conjunctives but basically i'm going to concentrate on these because i believe and based on experience i've been tutoring and instructing for the past 30 years i'm an author as well i know that these 16 basic transition words are the ones that you really need so let's go back again now these transitions or link words will assist you to join simple sentences together. Now why simple sentences together? Because I believe that the core component, the main element, the main component in English writing and communication is the simple sentence. If you master writing and Consequently, communicating by using simple sentences, you will be able to proceed in writing and communication smoothly. So again, transitions and link words will assist you to join simple sentences together. And once you do that, they, the transitions and link words, would enable you to change these simple sentences into compound and complex sentences some of you might ask is there a difference between compound and complex sentences let me just give you two simple examples okay now i say salim is in the office okay and Sami is sorry Sami is in the office too. This is a compound sentence. Why? Because it's basically two sentences. Okay now two simple sentences. Salim is in the office. Sami is in the office too. And I have combined, I have joined these two simple sentences together by using a conjunction. In this case, the conjunction is and. You know, by the way, I'm going to use the word conjunction and conjunctive only in this tutorial. Later on, we're going to replace them with transition words and link words because such words are easier to use than the ones I have mentioned before. So now again, this is what a compound 
sentence. Now let me give you an example of a complex sentence. I would say after Salim arrived to his office, sorry, he met, comma, this is something that we're going to be discussing actually, the use of transition words and punctuation marks. So after Salim arrived to his office, he met with the HR okay, manager. Now this is called a complex sentence. Some of you might ask, why is it a complex sentence? And why the previ previous one is a comp compound sentence? Simply, a complex sentence is a sentence that is joined between an independent clause and a dependent clause. We're going to discuss this a bit further. And as you can see, I have a different link word or transition or conjunctive, which is in this case after. So let's go on. Again, why transitions? Transition words or link words will create coherence. This is the main advantage or the main advantages actually, is that by using transition words or link words, you are actually seeking, okay, to attain, to get coherence. You know what that means, coherence? Consistency, unity, rationality. And by doing so, you are actually giving more depth to the meanings you are trying to convey, either through writing or through communication. Moreover, transition words or link words will help you in making you, which is the most important issue as well, more fluent in communication. So now we actually have more than one advantage. The three main advantages are by just doing this is that you are seeking coherence, unity, rationality, consistency, more depth to your meaning, and furthermore, more fluency in communication. I'm going to start by showing you something really important. Some of you might ask, why do we call this a simple sentence? So now we know exactly what a simple sentence is. But now we need to know more. I want to show you something right now. A simple sentence is basically a sentence which doesn't contain any link words. This is the basic definition of a simple sentence. So what makes a simple sentence different from a compound and a complex is that in a simple sentence, like the one Ryan went to work or went back home early. This is a simple sentence. And why is it a simple sentence? Because simply you don't have any link words. Again, this is a simple sentence. And why is it so? Because look at it right now. I'm going to write that again. It doesn't contain any link words. In comparison with the compound and the complex, they contain link words. In this case, and, which is a conjunction, and in this case, after, which is a conjunctive, okay? But both are link words and transitions. So now let's go on. Now what I'm going to do is going to teach you right now, basically, how to start with the idea, which is transitions and link words. Now let's read the following two sentences. Ryan went back home early. He felt tired and exhausted. Now, the first one is an independent clause, while the other one is dependent clause. And if you ask yourself why, because in the first one, I can easily know who the doer of the action is, the performer of the action, the one who does the action, in this case, Ryan. And I know exactly what he did. He went back home early. So it's a complete sentence, grammatically and meaningfully. While on the other hand, he felt very tired and exhausted. If I do not have this in mind, you will keep asking yourself a very simple question. Who are we talking about? Who is the person we are referring to? Because I haven't used a proper noun as Ryan, I have used a pronoun. And in this case, this sentence is a bit ambiguous. It's not clear. 
Therefore, you need to join it to another sentence to make it clearer. So we call that dependent clause. It depends on another clause. That's why it's called dependent, or sometimes they call it subordinate. Okay, subordinate clauses. Sorry. Let me just tap that down. Subordinate clauses. Okay. So subordinate clauses are exactly as dependent clauses. Okay. Let me just have that. Sorry. In red. Okay. Now, how am, I, how am I going to join these two sentences together? I have more than one option, actually. It depends on the kind of transition word you're going to use. Now, I have used three different transition words. The first one, a transition word which refers to reason, cause and effect, because. So now, because is followed by the reason. Ryan felt very tired and exhausted. And the result was he went back home early. So I've chosen to use because. Because I've used the reason and the result in sequence. While on the other hand, I could use another link word or transition word, which is and so, which indicates result in this case. So now it's preceded by the, res the reason and then preceded by or followed by the result. On the other hand, I could use another way of joining sentences, simple sentences together, regardless whether they are independent or dependent. Look at this one. Ryan, who felt very tired and exhausted, went back home early. So what am I doing here, actually? I'm showing you what the course is about. You know what? I could, I could even add more information to this and to this one also. I could just say, you know, what kind of home is it? And why did he feel tired and exhausted you know i can have more information listed in the sentence itself and i can make it bigger and bigger and bigger but the basic notion the basic idea is that how am i going to join these two simple sentences together now let's take another example let's start by discussing the following four simple sentences salim is the first one this is a simple sentence. Why? Go back to the same definition we've talked about later before. A simple sentence is basically a sentence which doesn't contain any link word. So, Salim is the first one. Salim is the subject, is the verb. He comes early every day. He arrives to the office even before the GM himself and his assistant. They arrive half an hour in half an hour, late in half an hour. Now, the transition words and punctuation marks will help you transfer these four simple sentences, and they are independent sentences, okay, and dependent separate sentences into a more elaborate form. Like I told you, the more elaborate form is either a compound elaborate form or a complex elaborate form. Okay, now, so using punctuation marks and transition words will help you transfer these four simple sentences into a more elaborate form which is a complex sentence or a compound sentence but in this case i'm after complex sentences Okay, I'll show you why later on. Which in turn, after you transfer these four simple sentences into a complex sentence, which the complex sentence in turn will be part of a longer paragraph, which is also a part of a longer form of writing called text, which is paragraphs and texts. A text comprises, contains many paragraphs. And the core element of these paragraphs is the complex sentence. Now, this text comes in many forms. For example, this is one way of using transition words. Exemplification, giving example. 
an essay, an article, an email, a letter, and so on. It depends on the kind of writing or communication you are involved in. Now, these four sentences will be transferred into this form, which is the complex sentence. Salim is the first one who comes early every day, actually. Look at the punctuation marks, as you can see. He arrives to the office even before the GM and his assistant, who, both the GM and his assistant, arrive late in half an hour. So again, four sentences were turned into one complex sentence. How? By using punctuation marks and transition words, as you can see. Now, like I told you, we're going to be discussing in this course 16 basic transition words categories. And not just that, actually. We're going to be discussing also a, a, an innovative approach of using tenses. I'm not going to be teaching tenses like the one, the approach you have been doing maybe lately any year. Okay, re recently or like long time ago. I'm going to start doing a different approach. Now, so again, back again, what are the 16 basic transition words categories? We're going to start with transitions that refer to chronological or time markers, emphasis, summarizing, reference, illustration, and exemplification or clarification. I've given examples, as you can see. Addition, alternative and exception, reason and result, Okay, contrast, concession, and contradiction, conditional sentences, relative pronouns, purpose, comparison and similarity, manner, place and distance, and finally, time and tenses. And this is one segment that we're going to concentrate on. And by the way, this has a tutorial of its own. Okay, now let's start by the overview. Okay, again, the same question over and over. Why link words and transitions? I would like you to imagine that you are about to deliver a speech or to write an essay, an article, or a report. Your main aim is to have a logical order of your ideas. So, again, your main aim is to have a logical order, flow, and coherence of your ideas because you want your ideas to be considered as one whole entity. I would like you to go back and imagine reading these four sentences separately. Okay, now, how would you sound? How would you sound? And just like compare reading these four sentences separately by reading one single complex sentence. And how would you sound? I'm sure that this form is a more elaborate form. So back again, back again. You want your... You want your sentences, you want your speech, your writing, regardless what type of writing you are involved in, to be considered as one whole entity. Now, the question is, how? The tools which will enable you to do so are transitions and link words. So, the main advantage of this course is to help you achieve and accomplish the required coherent flow. The required coherent flow. Transitions are parts of speech. There are so many parts of speech in English. Maybe transitions is one of the most important ones. So they are primarily used to link words, phrases, or even sentences within a simple sentence. So they are used to link, join, simple sentences together. They show the relationships within a paragraph. Actually, you know, when we talk about relationships, we talk about functions. What do you want? What do you have in mind? We're going to talk about this later on. They show the relationships between the main idea and the support you want to give for your ideal sentences. They basically connect one idea to the next and help you progress from one significant idea to the next idea as well. They help to build up coherent relationships within the text. Now, different transitions have different roles, functions. And I have to have a comma here. And they do different things. A semicolon, as you can see, a punctuation mark, another punctuation mark, a link word. 
they achieve different tasks. Now, what I was doing here actually is that I was joining sentences together. This is one of the rules that we're going to be talking about. Again, one of the rules that I'm talking about here is addition, function. It's one of the transitions that refer to addition. So I added this sentence to the next one by using the link word and or conjunction. And then I've used another punctuation marks to keep adding ideas together. Understanding and knowing how to use transitions is essential for anyone who aims to communicate well and to be a good writer. Transitions bring structure, clarity, and unity, coherence, to your writing and to your communication as well. Now the question is how to use transitions and link words. First and foremost, ask yourself the following two crucial questions. So there are two crucial questions. What is the function that I desire the transition word to provide and fulfill? For example, I come home early and I go to my room. What is this? Addition. As soon as I come early, home early, I go to my room. A transition that refers to time and it has a function to show you that two actions happen in sequence which are based on habit. We're going to talk about this like I told you. As soon as and others have a separate tutorial. It's an interesting one by the way. So again, I come home early and I go to my room. You're adding information to one another. As soon as I come home early, I go to my room. And after I come home early, I go to my room. And I could even add more and more information, by the way. I could say, like, when I come home early, I go to my room. Before I go to my room, I come home early. You can have more than one option. It depends on the meaning you are trying to convey. So again, in this case, when I said, I come home early, actually, I was referring to something called addition. I'm adding information, okay, sentences together. When I say like, on, okay, when I say after I come home early, like I told you as soon as, or if I say like, let me just copy this. If I say when, again, when I come home early, I go to my room. So now this is a different, a different function. This one is called transitions that refer to time. We're going to discuss these. By the way, it's an interesting tutorial like I told you. And if I want to give you examples on this, there are so many examples, like the ones you have in front of you, as soon as, that's one. Okay, after, while, when, and so on. Now reason, we can go back, we can go back to the first two sentences that we talked about, if you remember, when I said, okay, let me just take this down. Okay, I want to show you right now. This is called reason. So again, if I say, Ryan went back home, like I told you, an independent clause. He felt very tired and exhausted, dependent clause. And then I've joined these two sentences, two clauses together by using either because or and so. Okay, so this is reason and this is result, by the way. Okay, I could just substitute because by on the grounds that or seeing that. And by doing so, actually, we are creating more options, more alternatives, and we are adding more color to our writing and to our communication. So instead of saying because, I could even have more synonyms. Okay, since, as, for, for the reason that, or on the grounds that, if you want your, your sentences to look more formal, you could use on the grounds that or seeing that. So this was reason, actually. Let me take this off because this is not reason. Okay, I wanna show you now what reason is. We're done with reason, actually. Okay, now. Now, this one is result. So now, 
if I want to take this as an example, I would say result. And I would give you, we tend to use one of these transitions like so. Okay. Therefore, consequently, they all have the same meaning, by the way. But like I told you before, we are trying to add more color to our what? To our writing out our communication. Okay. I want to give you more synonyms. So, thus, therefore, accordingly, subsequently. Okay, now let's see. Therefore, okay, now the same things. And so, as a result, and so on. So, now, by now, you have figured out exactly what am I doing because I have just answered the question what is the most proper transition word that would satisfy this purpose? Again, we ask ourselves what is the function that I desire the transition word to provide and fulfill? And then I've given you all these examples. Okay, addition, like I told you. Okay, and uh, time, reason, and result. So we call these what? Functions. And I have chosen certain transition words because I believe that these transition words will satisfy my purpose. Now let's start with very simple practices. The intention is to show you how transition words truly help you to build up a cohesive paragraph, which is capable of conveying your desired meaning. Practice one. Now I'm going to give you 16 simple sentences, okay? Some of these are independent clauses, some of them are dependent clauses, and some of them are even, even compound clauses, okay? Okay, now let's read. And through reading, I would like you to see how simple sentences are changed into one text by using transition words and punctuation marks. By the way, I can't believe that some people uh, study transition words without studying punctuation marks. They are together, they are joined together. So now, I'm not going to use transition words, maybe one or two, but basically, okay, 90% of these sentences do not contain link words or transitions. Salim is the first one. He comes early every day. He arrives to, his, to the office even before the GM himself and his assistant. They, I refer to the GM and his assistant, arrive late in half an hour. There's so much traffic, he lives. He parks his car in the main parking lot. He works, he, he, he arrives early. He doesn't pay any charges. Other employees arrive late. They usually walk for at least 15 minutes. They usually park their cars. And the other distant parking, the other distant parking lot. You could imagine when it rains what happens to these lazy employees. They tend to wake up late. They subsequently arrive to work late. Subsequently is a link word, by the way, which means consequently. Now I would show you 16 sentences were changed, were transformed into two paragraphs, two short texts. And how did I do that? By simply using link words link words take a good look salim is the first one who i'm referring to salim comes early every day let me just let me just like you know tell you something about using uh, the simple present tense in this case i'm going to use the present simple tense as you can see and this is a simple sentence why am i using this because the present simple tense refers to repeated, permanent, regular, habitual actions. So again, Salim is the first one who comes early every day. Actually, he arrives to the office even before the GM and his assistant who, on, actually on, I'm emphasizing something, okay? Actually, I'm emphasizing something. And you can see how I have used the semicolon here and the comma here because I have a small letter here. If I have a capital letter like, I can't use a semicolon, I have to use a period, full stop. Actually, he arrives to the office even before, but I can't use this, by the way, it doesn't look nice. Let me just keep it a semicolon and a small letter. Actually, he arrives to the office even before the GM and his assistant, who both arrive late in half an hour. As a matter of fact, there is so much traffic where he lives, because I'm referring to a location. Moreover, this is one way of joining sentences together based on addition. 
He drives his wife. I've added more information to look to make the text look alive. He drives his wife and kids to her work and their school. Anyway, anyway, okay. Salim tends to park his car in the main parking lot where he works. Owing to the fact that, which means because, but I'm creating more options, more alternatives. I'm adding more color to my writing, to my communication. He arrives early. He doesn't pay any charges. Whereas, contrast, others, I refer to employees, who arrive late usually walk at least 15 minutes or for 15 minutes. On the grounds that also has the same meaning as because. They usually park their cars in the other distant parking lot. A punctuation mark would save the situation here. I don't have to keep using transitions and link words. That's why I told you, you have to bear in mind that punctuation marks and transition words work side to side, alongside. You could imagine when it rains, what would happen? Let me just, okay, I can't have a comma here. You could imagine when it rains, what would happen to these lazy employees who tend to wake up late and and subsequently subsequently they arrive to work late. So now, what did you figure out? With a simple count of words, you can easily tell that the number was 138 words. And imagine 21 of these words were basically transition words. And not to mention the fact that I have used also a number of punctuation marks. So both the punctuation marks and the transition words are what made you look, you know, what made the text actually look like this. The previous text was a combination of numerous simple sentences together. These sentences turned into complex sentences by using the transition words and they finally became a text. Okay. 138 words. Practice two. Okay. So now in practice two, again, I'm going to provide you with 11 simple sentences or sometimes compound sentences. And we're going to change these simple or compound sentences into what? Into a text. Like the one we have over here. Let me just take this down so we can have a better view. Okay. Okay, now, it was unusual for the GM, that's the general manager, to arrive early to the office. I, j I would like to remind you of something that I'm going to be using the past symbol in this case. If you remember, we said something about using the present symbol because all the tenses that I have used in this, okay, now, text, okay, now, all the tenses were in the present symbol, comes, arrives, okay, arrive again there is and so on okay let me just go through all the verbs I just want to show you that all the verbs are in the present symbol okay okay arrives again doesn't pay together okay R arrive walk park Okay, you could imagine when it rains, what would happen, who tend and arrive to work late. Again, as you can see, all these verbs were used in the present symbol because, like I told you, it is important to know that we are talking about habits here and habits are usually uh, repeated, permanent, regular activities. Okay, so let's go down to text number two. So it was unusual for the GM to arrive early to the office. He was there in the office half an hour earlier than usual. He had no time to waste. The minute he entered his office, he immediately sent a memo, a memorandum to the HR, the human resources manager. He asked to call for a general meeting to be held. The HR manager immediately circulated the memo. All the employees were asked to prepare, prepare a proposal about the proposed merge, okay? Merge means the combination between two, the company, their company and another company. 
All employees attended the meeting. They thoroughly discussed the proposed merge. They did not arrive to any solutions and conclusions. So now, let's see how the text would look like. Initially, is one way of saying to start with. It was unusual for the GM to arrive early to the office, nonetheless, which means however. Again, pay attention, pay, pay close attention to the way I'm using punctuation marks. Nonetheless, again, which has the same meaning as, let's see together, however, nevertheless, even so, on the other hand, today, you know, on the other hand, might not sound that good. Today, he was in the office half an hour. Let's just highlight the verbs again. They are all in the past tense. So he was in the office half an hour earlier than usual for the reason that, which has the same meaning as because, he had no time to waste. Therefore, again, pay attention to the punctuation marks and how I use transition words. As soon as the minute he entered his office, he immediately sent, again, look at this one. Okay, why do I have to have a comma here? Because I have a link word at the beginning, which is as soon as. So I have to have a comma in the middle to separate the two clauses. Sent a memo to the HR manager whom he asked to call for a general meeting to be held accordingly. The HR manager instantly circulated the memo in which all the employees were, were asked to prepare a proposal regarding, which has the same meaning as concerning or about, okay, but I don't like to use about, okay, this is more formal, more technical, more professional, more advanced, more convincing. Regarding the proposal merge between their company and another, all the employees attended the meeting and they thoroughly discussed the proposed merge. However, they didn't arrive to any satisfactory solutions and conclusions. Okay, now again, with a simple count of words, you can easily tell that the number was 118. Again, 13 of these words were basically transition words. And don't forget that we have used also a number of uh, punctuation marks just like addition okay as, as you can see over here okay so the previous text was a combination of numerous simple sentences these these sentences turned into complex sentences by using the transition word and then they turned into a text now practice number two let me just take it down for a better view okay now before we begin, I'm going to show you that we'll be using different types of tenses because I'm actually preparing you for what's going to be given to you later on in one of the tutorials. I'm going to teach you all the tenses in English, but I'm not going to burden you with the kind of tutoring that many tutors used to practice on you. I want to give you tenses in a more innovative, different approach. Okay, so now let's read. The company's new GM will be meeting with all the employees very soon. By 10.30 today in the meeting, in the morning actually, the employees will have been deliberating, discussing, the appropriateness of the proposal for two weeks. He, I mean the GM, and all the employees are going to be discussing the new amendments, changes, of the proposed merge. The GM had been negotiating this merge for three weeks. The general meeting had been held. All the employees have been working hard to come up with applicable proposals to be submitted regarding the merge. All of them had recommended that the merge is in the best interest of the company. The GM has recommended that he will be giving each employee another two days to further study the proposal. Finally, by next Tuesday, they should have arrived at a satisfactory solution. Okay, now let's see how these nine sentences whether simple or compound, have been changed, have been transferred into a more elaborate form, which is the text or the complex sentences. To start with, the company's new GM will be the GM, sorry, will be meeting with all the employees very soon because by 10:30 today in the morning, the employees will have been deliberating. I want to give you the meaning of deliberating. Means 
reflecting, thinking, reconsidering, on considering the appropriateness of the proposal for two weeks. Actually, he and all the employees are going to be discussing the new amendments of the proposed merge. In fact, in fact, let me show you how to use this transition word and the punctuation marks as well. Let me go back over here again. Okay. In fact, the GM had been negotiating this merge for three weeks before the general meeting had been held, a semicolon. All the employees have been working hard to come up with applicable proposals to the submitted uh, to be submitted regarding, like I told you, it has the same meaning as concerning and about. The merge as a matter of fact. All of them had recommended that the merge is in the best interest of the company. The GM has recommended that he will be giving each employee another two days to further study the proposal. In addition to that, by next Tuesday, Okay. They will, they should have arrived at a satisfactory resolution. Again, with a simple word, count of words, you can easily tell that the number was 149 words and 18 of them were what? Transition words. And not to mention the fact that many punctuation marks were used as well. So the previous text was a combination of numerous simple and compound sentences together. These sentences turned into complex sentences by using the transition words feedback. The transition words, like we started, as in the same way we started the tutorial, they assisted you and they will assist you, assist you to join previous simple sentences together or your own simple sentences together. They have created coherence. Like, if you remember, we said coherence has another meaning as unity, okay, consistency, rationality, logic, lucidity. And they have also given your meaning more depth. And not to mention the fact that they also helped in making you more fluent in communication. Thank you for watching. <clears throat>